Brenda Luckett remembers learning about segregation. How the end started in Memphis, and their, their first franchise hotel was here in Clarksdale. And I wanted to swim in a swimming pool. And I, I kept telling my daddy I wanted to stop there. I wanted to go there. And he told me this one. He, he would just tell me, "No, we can't. We can't go there. We can't go there." Finally, he had to explain to me why we couldn't go. And he said that only white people could go to that hotel and to that, you know, and to that pool. I can remember that as being the first time that I knew that there was any such thing as segregation. She's part of the last generation of Americans to have lived under the Jim Crow laws, which legalized segregation. And 60 years on, she'll be voting in an election roiled by racial division. I always had that entrepreneurial spirit. Lorenzo Washington remembers that earlier time too. He got a job at a gas station as a teenager, making 50 cents an hour. When his boss found out he was saving to buy a car, he cut his shifts. He didn't want black folk to have anything. Washington says his boss would also hurl racist slurs at black workers and manhandle them. Then when I turned 16, I, I, st I thought I'd stand up for myself, so I stood my ground. Johnny Newson faced a quieter, systemic racism. His father was a gifted tractor mechanic. Since dad was so influential and, and knew how to, to, to fix the tractor, they had him training a couple of little white gentlemen. And dad said that when he looked at his check, which was $60, and the young white males came back and showed dad their check, their check was more than my father, and he was the trainer. My dad said he fell down on his knees and cried. In the summer of 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. It banned discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin at places serving the public, like swimming pools. Around that time, Luckett's parents sent her to a freedom school. They were projects of civil rights activists, and it's where she says she learned how to read. They started reading chapter books to me. I had never seen a chapter book. I, you know, I, I was in kindergarten. But I just said, they must really think I'm smart to read something with that many words on a page. You know, <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> Luckett went on to become a special education teacher. She told her students to never let people stop them from learning. Washington became a music promoter and producer. In 2010, he opened a museum showcasing Nashville's black music scene in hopes of offering something to the next generations. Newson's father quit his job after learning about the pay gap. He opened his own business, Newson Auto Parts, in 1971, which Newson inherited. My dad business crossed the street. That's his legacy. That's generational wealth. I intend to leave that for my children, and I hope my children leave it for their children. We have come now to a time of testing. We must not fail. 